The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to the Weekend Real Estate Report on 1057 The Fan. If you want the truth about credit scores, buying, and financing a home, call the show at 410 583 1057. Here's the host of the Weekend Real Estate Report, Carl Delmont. Hey, good morning, Baltimore. Carl Delmont here, Weekend Real Estate Report. And, uh, of course, we always try to bring in a great guest to educate our listeners. And we have a regular guest today and someone who's actually been racking up a bunch of awards, well-deserved as well, Tony Zhao from the Integrity Plus Network. So, Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, I know that uh, you've been racking up a lot of awards, growing your team, a lot of good things going on out there. Um, the, the market's actually showing showing some signs of positivity. Right? Rates are improving. Inventory is improving a little bit. Uh, what are you seeing out there now? Are people starting to reach out and get a little more confident in selling, or do you still see some hesitation there? There's still some hesitation overall. Um, the market itself hasn't really been that bad this year. It's definitely um, it's a little bit more unique, right? Like it's still a seller's market, but it doesn't always feel that way. Yeah, and I think you know it's there's a weird dichotomy from what I'm hearing from a lot of realtors is that. Some homes are getting multiple bids and crazy offers. Other homes are sitting for a few days. And then we're also hearing that some people are canceling their contracts like midway through the process. I've run into more and more issues with things falling out. And um, a lot of it from what I've seen, though, it's it's more. So when things get scarce, right, you got people throw stuff against the wall and hope it sticks. And I ran into a few lenders that are doing that and not really going through with the process. Like they're not checking out the people vetting them as much as they should. And then you're having stuff fall through. So I think that's part of the problem, right? Like when work gets scarce and people need money, you have some people, you know, not the professional ones that are going to take those shortcuts. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot when it comes to actually listing the houses, you are starting to see some more um, price reductions, but it kind of goes back to what we've talked about before. If you list a house right now and you have a full marketing package and they're putting it out there, they're not taking the shortcuts, they're listing the price correctly, right? Because the price is everything. Mm -hmm. And then the homeowner is actually taking care and doing his part where, you know, they're getting the front lawn. So you got some curb appeal, maybe doing some painting, getting it staged clean. Like if you put those three together, we're still seeing multiple offers with escalations. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm glad you cleared that up because I, I saw some articles and a couple of realtors told me the same thing, that they've had some deals fall through. They didn't go into detail like you said. So I'm, I'm glad to hear it's it's more of inexperienced uh, or aggressive, you know, lenders, not uh, clients who are like, oh, well, I'm going to wait because now it's not a good time. I, mean, I think right now with, you know, rates improving, rates you know, as of this show, I mean, we're about as low as we've been in a year. And a lot of people are thinking the rates are going to improve even more. I, I don't look, we're not going to get back to what we saw in 2020, 21, but, you know, getting to an attractive rate, I, I think it could be possible, maybe high fives coming up down the road. Uh, but either way, I mean, I think people are also getting acclimated to what today's rates are, which really are normalized rates. You know, we've been saying for a long time on the show in 2020, when, when rates were as low as they were in 21, it was really just a fed, you know, subsidizing rates. And I kept telling people on the show, like, listen, rates are really probably about 6%. The Fed's just subsidizing, and that's why they're so low. Once the Fed starts pulling back, which they did, you saw how quickly rates rose. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, there's a big talk now about the Fed's going to cut in September. Some people, including myself, think a 50 basis point cut's possible. But I really want to see what they're going to do with treasuries. Are they going to start buying treasuries instead of selling off the treasuries and, and the balance sheet, are they going to start adding to it? And if they do, that could actually help rates even more. But are you starting to see more people reach out about, hey, you know, now that rates are improving, we think we might be ready to sell in a few months? Or is that still a little bit premature? It's a slight tick up. Um, I, I don't think it's an, it always takes a little bit of time for, I think, the market and people to catch on, like when things have dropped, right? It's not going to be instant. And I think a lot of people are still setting on very great rates. You know, I've heard talking to clients anywhere from two and a quarter to three percent. So they're kind of hesitant to move on unless they have to. Now, we're in an area here between D.C. and Baltimore. We have a lot of military and corporate relocation. So I think that helps keep us moving a lot more than the rest of the country. 
um, because they have to move, right? If it's a military move or a corporate relocation, they got to move. So that's going to create them to move. But the people sitting on good rates, unless they have to, or they've completely outgrown their property, it's a little bit more to get them to move. So I've had a couple, uh, me myself that did it too, is basically where I had that great rate. It's like, okay, well, I'm not getting rid of that house. I'm going to turn that into a rental and then go buy my next house. Mm-hmm. Get in cheaper, right? Because if rates drop, I do feel prices are going to escalate faster. And then when it gets to a good point, I can always refinance, but I'll get in yep. cheaper. So I bought my house, you know, maybe six, seven months ago in this in my neighborhood, they're selling for sixty thousand more. I'm just waiting for my rate to get to the right place and then I'll refinance and drop down. But I got the house that I wanted and I got in cheaper because you're not changing the prices, right? The mm-hmm. rate we all think's coming down. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, you know, one thing too, we talked about the housing where some homes are sitting and some are selling quickly. It's interesting because typically in a market where it's, you know, basically a seller's market, you know, buyers don't even get it. I mean, the house or sellers, don't, the house barely hits the market. It's already got, you know, people wanting to come in or making offers on it. But then you get in a market where you're seeing open houses and it takes a little while to open house. You know, to your point earlier, you got to market it. You got to take some time to put it together, organize it. But we're starting to see more open houses now. And I know you have one. We'll get to that in a second. But what's your thought now on more open houses? Because, you know, 2020, you didn't see those. Well, I think, again, we go back to like our full marketing package. Like we got to work right now. So before where a lot of times they were being canceled out and you were never getting to the open houses, which I still see some. I had a showing yesterday. The house came on yesterday. My showing was at 10. At 9 o'clock, I got an email. They had accepted an offer. So they must have took an offer during the coming soon sight unseen phase, right? So you still have that fast move, but I think you're seeing more and more open houses because again, as an agent, I think we have to do a little bit more. You can't just put the house on the market and hope it's going to go. You got to put everything together and the open houses is a great way to give you some exposure. So like you said, so I'm actually seeing something that I hadn't noticed before, um, where they're having during the week open houses that aren't broker opens, they're public opens. Hadn't really mm-hmm. seen that a lot around here. And I've been noticing that more and more in the MLS. So this week here, um, you know, we're going to, we got five May in court that come on on Thursday, f- Friday, Saturday, we had an open house. And again, today, Sunday, we'll have another open house. So we're going to try it. We tried the week one, wasn't too bad. Just trying to get some extra exposure in there because my goal is like, you could take an offer that first day, but most of the time, if you put that listing on a Wednesday or Thursday, statistically, they're the best days to list. Mm-hmm. You hold your open houses all weekend, maybe throw a third one in like we did on Friday. And all your marketing has time to actually go out. By Monday, Tuesday, we're usually presenting multiple offers. And that's when you start seeing the escalations, waiver of appraisals, gaps, home inspection waivers, things like that. So to me, it's better to drag it a little bit for your client as a seller. Now, as a buyer side, it stinks. Like when I'm on the buyer side, I might take my offer. I don't want to wait all weekend, but it just depends on what hat you're wearing. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, and that all those things you were just talking about are all the reasons why you're winning all these awards and everything else. If someone's interested in buying a listing of property, maybe even hire you to, you know, for rentals or whatever, let's uh, tell them how to reach out to you. So the easiest way is to go to our website, um, the integrity plus network.com. You can meet the whole team. You can pick me, you can pick one of the girls or any of the guys on the team, we're all trained the same way. So you'll get, you'll get a good deal either one. Makes sense. Integrity plus network, long time sponsor of the show. And of course they come on pretty regularly and just to share what's going on with the market because the market has been changing a lot and listen, real estate's local. So what you may be seeing in uh, say Howard County may not be the same thing you're going to see in Harford County or Eastern mm-hmm. shore or the city. So, I mean, the market, it really is uh, something that's a, a work in progress, so to speak. But uh, I'm encouraged by the fact that, you know, we got some positive news when it comes to rates, some positive news when it comes to inventory. And, you know, I think maybe the industry needed it, you know, a little bit of a Kalana to get rid of some of the people that just jumped in when it was easy and maybe to do the right things. Um, just, I guess, change the subjects quickly, you know, so here we are in August and we have the whole new buyer's agent thing. You want to talk about that just real quickly? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I know a lot of people are kind of freaking out. And I think a lot of it's just the news scaring people because here in Maryland, we really have not changed much. Mm -hmm. Um, We've always had buyer agency. It's always been an option to pay the buyer. Um, You know, we do have where the seller does their commission. And typically a listing agent will take part of our commission and push it out to the buyer side because 
the short side of it is, is they're acting like it's going to save a bunch of money. Most sellers move, right? So they're going to have to pay it on their end. And most sellers move up, more sellers move up than down. So it, the money kind of all works itself out. But I, I think there's a lot of hysteria over it. And here mm-hmm. in Maryland, as you know, most of the laws were already in place. We already showed how everything was divided, how we marketed the house, you know, who got what commissions. We already had buyer agency that you had to sign. And that was all put in. So buyers actually had protection because, you know, back in the day, everybody technically represented the seller. There was no true buyer agency. Um, I'm not a big fan of a lot of how they're presenting it. But overall, I think, you know, in my part, I haven't really changed much other than having to explain it to everybody. Mm hmm. Yeah. So again, we're talking about Tony Zaldi's Integrity Plus Network. We're just covering the latest in the, uh, you know, you heard about the NAR settlement. Uh, as Tony said, it really hasn't impacted Maryland much because we've always had buyer's agency. But the market, like I said, it's changing somewhat. You know, rates are improving now. We're starting to pick up a lot more refis as well as people who are actually thinking now, well, maybe I should get pre-approved. I'm probably not ready to buy immediately, but I might as well get approved now. So rates continue to drop, you know, they're ready to pull the trigger. And I think that's a smart play. I mean, as you said earlier, you know, you bought a house six months ago and it's already up $60,000. I I do believe just basic economics, when rates continue to to improve, it's going to create more demand and that should increase, you know, increase the value. So I think it's always smart to consider buying now and you can always refi. We have a thing called a Fremont free fi. So if you buy with us, if rates drop it in any time within three years, you buy from us, we'll actually refinance you for just about free, you know, just as long as you, know, you qualify for the loan. But um, it, it's just a great way to get in there and get that peace of mind. So um, the other thing, we offer SBA and commercial loans. Uh, Tony, I know you do some commercial real estate. You want to talk a little bit about that part of your business? Yeah. So um, basically we handle everything residential. We do land and I do commercial too, sales, purchases, lease. Um, and actually I've been talking to Kevin Murphy here recently about a um, possible um, purchase for a pharmacy. So if anybody cool. needs help looking for, you know, a business or anything, I just closed on a theater um, for a theater company. So we can help with that aspect, too. If you want to sell your house and buy a business and buy a new house, we can take care of the whole package. There you go. Yeah, we can help you with that as well. So, I mean, it's it's always good. Uh, you know, we're one of the few lenders out there that can do the uh, commercial on, as well as the residential. And uh, we just we did it because it's a added in a value for our realtor partners and for our clients. So a lot of good things going on out there. We also give you that complimentary home warranty and we're available, as you know, Tony, you know, we're available weekends and evenings to help out because most people, they can't do things during the day because they have a job, but you know, and then at night, typically they've got sports with their kids and other things. So uh, we try to be accommodative and I think that's a big plus as well. Um, that's huge. Quickly- that, that's huge, Carl, because I bug Haley and Kevin all the time on weekends and nights because, like you said, we work when everybody else isn't pretty much. And when it comes into competitive offers, you have to be able to get in. And it's a whole team, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's you and me together doing that. And usually that's me contacting Kevin or Haley on the weekend to be like, hey, I got to put this offer together. I need you to run some numbers. And yep. they've been great with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's like having a concierge service when you choose the you know, Tony and Integrity Plus Network and us, and that's always a good thing. Uh, with the little bit of time we have left, let's just uh, let people know how to reach you once again. Yep, easiest way to reach me and my team is just to go to IntegrityPlusNetwork.com. You can feel free to call me as well at 443-610-9462. Perfect. And listen, if you're listening now and you're hungry, you got to check out our friends at Cooper's. Cooper's with a K, K-O-O-P-E-R-S. I know that they had watch parties for the Olympic soccer. They've got um, all kinds of things there. Their, their sister restaurant, Cilantro, where soccer is religion. I know they had soccer on there for sure. Uh, also, Seven Nations rugby tournaments, all kinds of great thing. And of course, authentic Irish cuisine. Open seven days a week, brunch specials on weekends. And of course, they... Uh, as the burger of the month and the burgers are voted best burger in Baltimore and best burger in Maryland. In fact, last summer they went up to Hamburg, Pennsylvania and won best burger. Uh, Their burgers are really, really good, but all their meals are good. I love getting the spinach salad with the salmon on it. Um, their gumbo, even Guy Fieri raves about that, but open seven days a week. They also have location in Timonium. You can check that one out. If you decide to go in there, tell me heard on the radio. They'll appreciate that. We're going to take a quick break here. We come back. We've got another guest, our small business spotlight, and uh, we're going to talk about that, plus uh, the, the Fed rates and a bunch of other things as well. Tony, I want to thank you for taking time out of a busy Sunday. Good luck with the open house today, and uh, we'll be in touch. 
Yep, and, and if anybody's out there, we're at five Mayotte Court here in Hellthorpe, Maryland, from twelve to two. Perfect. Thanks so much. All right, have a good one. You too. The weekend real estate report will be right back on one zero five seven. The fan.